Zero accounting software. Transaction reports. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in, holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175%. Zoom in, opening the demo, but doing so with the reset button, which will reset the data and open the demo at the same time. We're going to be duplicating some tabs as we do every time to put our major financial statement reports in, that being the balance sheet of the income statement. Right click the tab up top, duplicating it. Right clicking on the duplicated tab to duplicate it. Going back to the middle tab as the tab to the right is thinking accounting drop down. We want the balance sheet report. Tab to the right, skip to the loo, tab to the right. Accounting drop down. This time we want the income statement report. The profit and loss, the PL, back to the middle tab. And let's change the dates to be matching here. We need matching dates. They have to be wearing the same suit and looking nice together. So there it is, December 31st. And then we'll update that one. And so those, that's the setup process we've been doing every time. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. These are the major two financial statement reports. Now we're going to look at some other reports, typically given more detail, providing more on one or multiple line items of these reports. Right click in the tab up top, duplicating it so we can add some new reports or check some new reports out. That is accounting drop down reports. And then let's just scroll on down. We're going to look at some of these transaction reports down at the bottom here. So we've got the uh, account transactions and the detailed account transactions being the major couple we want to take a look at. I'm going to open it up this time by right clicking on it and open in a new tab, which is a nice little way to go so that we don't have to keep on going back when I go back to this screen. So we've got our options up top. So let's first hit the drop down and I'm just going to select all accounts. So I'm going to select all accounts here and then I'm going to keep the date range on just the month of December, which it currently is at. And then we might look at some of these other options in a second. Let's go ahead and update it and just see what the report, get a feel for what the report looks like. So if we scroll on down, then we've got our information by accounts. So now we've got the accounts payable and kind of like the details. So it's somewhat like a, a general ledger type of report, giving us the detail for the current time frame selected the month of December. And then we've got the opening balance here and then the uh, source, which represents the document that we use to enter it, meaning the, the kind of document tying it into here. We want to get a good idea of what those documents are doing, which accounts are affected. And then we've got the description. We've got the reference. We got the debits and the credits. So if you don't know debits and credits, then this is a good report to kind of get a feel for the debits and credits because there are times when the debits and credits they are more efficient than just thinking about ups increases and decreases and then you've got your running balance so after every transaction you've got the uh the running balance here the gross the tax and then the related account so you can see the other side of the transaction with the uh related account here so this is kind of like a general ledger type of report and so if I scroll down, we've got then the accounts receivable, we got the checking accounts, uh, and then cost of goods sold, dues and subscriptions, and so on and so forth. So that's nice. Now you could use a report like this to try to possibly do your billing system as well. So meaning if you're billing as a bookkeeper, you might do it like just on hours, how many hours you spent, but you might try to use one of these reports to, to see how many transactions you do or how many accounts are in are impacted each month or whatever 
and then try to say if you are in within this range I'm gonna charge you this month if you're within this range I'll charge you this month and th then you can kind of give evidence on how many transactions you entered and your billing based on the transactions as as opposed to kind of an ambiguous measure which is just time which can you know fluctuate <laughs> depending on how how you know well you're working at one time versus another and it's kind of agonizing to do your billing that way so if you can ground your billing in something other than that that could could be useful sometimes and then of course you can uh, de deselect them and you can take a look at one account at a time so that's quite nice to have that kind of flexibility so if you wanted to go in here and drill down now you can do a similar this report is similar to say if I went to the balance sheet here and I went into the office equipment or whatever and I this is the computer but whatever I drill down on it and this is going to give us our detailed report which is kind of like a general ledger report uh, here and so now we've got kind of our activity giving us a similar kind of layout of the data so over here this report you know is similar in nature but you know you could select all the accounts at one time to show you or you could select multiple accounts to show you kind of like that GL type of activity uh, in it so let's select all again and let's go here we've got then the date range so clearly we can change the date range if we so choose on the columns drop down we could add the account code so if we want the number related to it update then that's going to give us our code number as well for the account here it is there's the column for the code number basically account numbers Okay, and these are all going to be the same account number because we're dealing with the transactions in the accounts payable. But it, And then we have the other side of the transaction that has the code for the other side of the transaction there. But I think they're just looking at the code for this column. In any case, let's hit the drop down under the code. Account type, contacts. We could add contact, which would be vendors and customers mainly. You would think contact group. Uh, invoice numbers we can add. Net region we can add. Tax rate tax rate names we can add those we've got our groupings uh, items here we've got ac accounts to include only with transactions so you can use see the accounts only that have transactions with transactions or zero balances so if you wanted to include all the accounts let's say your accountant or whatever was auditing you or something and they want all the accounts even with zero transactions you might choose that uh, all including zero balances so zero transactions and the ones with the zero balance and then you've got your filtering options here which in a report like this you could you know possibly have you know test out your filtering kind of options that we've looked at a little bit in prior presentations so you've got that there as well so let's let's close that one out the other one i wanted to look at is the detailed account transaction so let's right click on that one way down in the transactions area in our reports open it up in a new tab and so now we've got from uh, December so we've got a range up top so we can select the range on the drop down we've got uh, sort by account name account code reference or date so we'll keep it on the account code here and so I believe this is listing out all of the transactions that took place in basically a group and again this is a nice report to kind of see the activity if you're supervising someone or something like that you want to see what they have been uh, doing in terms of the data input could be useful in in like a grading type of section so we might look at this one to kind of verify the transactions that we enter when we get into our group problem and again it could be something that you might use for your billing so you might say hey look i'm going to try to count how many transactions i did in the last month now it gets a little bit kind of messy there because some transactions are more difficult and time consuming than others. So if you group one transaction for payroll for, for example, that's usually involving a lot more detail in terms of how many accounts are affected. So you might try to use like the other report to count the accounts that are affected possibly, or, and then you could set your ranges in terms of how much you charge based on that. Or you can kind of group this one together, which would be an easier one to look at and say, this is how many transactions we made. If you're within this range, I bill this much. If you're within this range, I bill so much and so on. Down below, you can sort it. We can say, I want all my transactions on the page here. So now we've got all the transactions. Now it's sorted by the account code. So 
it would be kind of nice to be able to sort it by any of the items up top. Let's sort it by date, which I think would be another common way you might see this. So now we're sorting it uh, by date. So if you're looking at trying to see what what was entered into the system, say, you know, last week or something like that, then you might go into the system here and sort it by date. And then you can kind of see the activity as it was entered into the system. And so that's kind of a nice deal. Note that it doesn't have the numbers on the right hand side. And I think that's in part because, uh, you know, there might be more than one account that's affected. So, so that's kind of a kind of a kind of uh, annoying that we don't have the number there but you can see why we might not have that if we go into the detail then we can then uh, see the actual form that was put in place here and so there we have the credit note if I go back and I go into a particular form then we can drill back down on the source form the bill in this case and of course then we get the numbers here and again obviously there could be multiple things that are affected because the bill has accounts uh, accounts payable affected the other side going to uh, a room some a general expense account and then you also have taxes affected so there's multiple accounts affected so one number in terms of the value of the transaction isn't always going to be something that really makes sense but it's a great report to kind of drill down the detail instead of seeing it by date i mean by account which you might do just using the balance sheet and the income statement meaning we go on the balance sheet and the income statement and we kind of drill down on the activity in these accounts, which basically gives us our detail by date within each account. So does that other kind of general ledger report basically giving us the detail by date per account. This report can kind of give us what has happened by date without reference to first account. We can sort it by date of transactions, which could be useful in some cases. So just wanted to take a look at the trend. Those are the transactions reports we wanted to check out.